What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I'm Gold Pony. That is me on the screen right there. And so this year, I have indeed reviewed the 2020 Subaru Outback as well as the 2020 Subaru Four Star already. I have driven both of them. I've experienced both of them completely. And I'll leave the individual links to both of those reviews at the very end of this video. But most people do cross shop both the Outback and the Forester, so I thought it'd be fun to compare the two side by side here. Both give you the best all-wheel drive system in existence of course great safety great reliability they really are two solid picks but they are indeed very different in many ways and so having said that though and having reviewed both of those i am going to be doing a comparison between those two and if you are new to my comparisons i basically compared 10 key differences between the two of them with a clear winner at the end so what do you guys say let's go ahead and get started with number 10 on the list so my first comparison is going to be the price. Of course, 2020 Outback starts at a price of $26,645, whereas the 2020 Forester is going to have an MSRP of $24,495. And so in the end, the base price, as far as that goes, the Forester is going to be $2,150 less. Then on the other hand, if you compare the two top trim levels of each car there, the Outback Touring XT is priced at $39,695. Then the Forester Touring is priced at $34,595. So even between those two, the Forester is going to be substantially less, coming in at $5,100 less than the Outback. So if you were looking for the inexpensive option, the less expensive option between those two, the Forester is definitely going to be the way to go, which puts our score at Subaru Forester in the lead one to nothing. Next on the comparison list here is going to be power differences. And so there is a big difference here, by the way. Subaru Forester gives you one engine option, that is it. Outback, however, gives you two engine options. So the way they are set up, when it comes to the Forester, it's going to be a 2.5 liter horizontally opposed Subaru Boxer engine, putting out 182 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 176 pound-feet of torque available at 4,400 RPM, producing a zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 8.5 seconds. On the other hand, the Subaru Outback, also with that base engine at least, gives you a 2.5 liter horizontally opposed boxer engine, same horsepower, same torque, same engine essentially, zero to 60 there, 8.7 seconds, slightly slower there, just because of its size essentially. But the other engine option with the Outback that is not available on the Forester is going to be a 2.4 liter turbocharged boxer engine, 260 horsepower available at 5,600 RPM, 277 pound-feet of torque at 2,000 RPM, zero to 60 for that engine set up 6.1 seconds in the Outback, that's wonderful. So obviously if you wanted the quicker option, the Outback is going to be the way to go here since both have the same base engine, essentially the same zero to 60 time Time as well. So again, faster setup is going to be the Outback in this case, which puts us at a one-to-one -one tie. Next comparison I have for you guys is fuel economy, of course. Forester comes in at 26 city, 33 highway, taking regular unleaded. Outpack comes in at 26 city, 33 highway. Same thing, once again, taking regular unleaded as expected. Then when it comes to the Outback turbocharged engine, 23 miles per gallon in the city, 30 on the highway, which is not that bad considering the power there. But if we're comparing apples to apples here, this one is going to be obviously a tie, which is where I'm going to leave it at because it is essentially a tie here. So one to one still, let's move on to reliability. And so according to Consumer Reports, I do like to use them because they don't actually accept any money from manufacturers. They buy their own cars, test them independently, so therefore they are not biased whatsoever. So. When it comes to the Forester above average reliability, that's excellent. Subaru Outback above average reliability once again. So as I said at the beginning of the video, they're both very reliable vehicles and that is backed up by consumer reports there, of course. So both of them above average there. So that part is a tie. So then you have to go to JD Power, which is my second go-to when it comes to reliability. Forester comes in at 77 out of 100. That's their scoring system there. Outback comes in at 81 out of 100. So although both are super solid picks when it comes to reliability according to jd power at least the outback actually is going to win this one although i will say typically na engines are going to be much more reliable than turbocharged engines so keep that in mind if you go with the outback the turbocharged one is more than likely not going to be quite as reliable as the other engine setup available for the outback but nonetheless 
JD Power says Outback wins, so two to one, Outback is in the lead. Number six comparison, very important one being safety, especially if you have kids in the back seat or if you're using this as a commuter car to work. When it comes to the Subaru Forester, it is an IIHS top safety pick plus, AKA the very highest designation given by IIHS, of course. When it comes to the Outback, exact same thing both very safe vehicles when it comes to that and in addition to that actually according to nhtsa both have identical crash test ratings as well so again very similar so what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave the tiebreaker coming down to the airbags because this is where they differ actually the subaru forester gives you seven airbags including a driver's knee airbag Outback gives you eight total airbags, including cushion airbags for both the driver and the passenger to prevent submarining. So in the end, Outback wins this particular comparison just because of the extra airbag puts us at a score of three to one Outback in the lead. Next comparison then is going to be cargo space. Forrester comes in at 31.1 cubic feet behind that second row. With the second row folded down, it bumps it up to 70.9 cubic feet. On the other hand, Subaru Outback comes in at 32.5 cubic feet behind that second row. With the second row folded down, it bumps up to 75.7 cubic feet. So therefore, Outback is going to give you more space. However, they are set up differently, of course. So the Forester is actually going to give you more height in that cargo area. So perhaps if you have a Mastiff or a Great Dane or an animal like that, maybe the Forester is going to be better off for you because the Outback is then going to have a smaller height in the cargo area, but it is going to be a little longer. The Outback, of course, has more length to it. So in the end, Outback, of course, does give you more cargo space. So I got to give it to the Outback once again, putting our score at four to one Outback in the lead. Next on our comparison list is going to be rear legroom. Forrester comes in at 39.4 inches. So for reference, actually, I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Outback comes in at 39.5 inches, a tenth of an inch better in the Outback. That's funny. Nearly identical once again to the Forester. So really a ton of room with either vehicle that you go with. And so I guess for the sake of friendly competition here, got to give this one to the Outback once again, which puts our score at five to one. Next on the comparison list is going to be braking. And so this is important, of course, if you're rush hour traffic, you need to come to a quick stop, or really if you have any kind of kids in the back seat. So I'm going to judge this one by the 60 to zero stopping distance in terms of feet. So when looking at the Forester up front, you're gonna get 11.6 inch ventilated front discs. If you go with the base trim level or the premium trim, it's gonna be different for the Sport Limited and Touring coming in at 12.4 inch ventilated front discs, nearly an inch larger. In the back, 11.2 inch solid rear discs either way. When it comes to the Outback 12.4 inch ventilated front discs, 11.8 inch solid rear discs, so a little bigger in the back there. All in all, in the end, when it comes to that braking distance, the Forester comes in at 129 feet. It takes to stop from 60. Outback comes in at 126 feet for that stopping distance. Quite honestly, neither of them are too incredibly impressive when you compare it to the other competition out there. But nonetheless, once again, Outback takes this one. Outback is now in the lead, six to one. Next, we are going to touch on interior quality. And honestly, this is a pretty easy comparison here. Taking a look at the tech, when it comes to the Forester, the largest screen available is an eight inch color touchscreen display. Looking at the Outback, 11.6 inch color touchscreen display tablet style, kind of like Tesla does there. Then when it comes to the seating, the Forester offers heated front and rear seats actually available. Outback offers heated front and rear seats, but also ventilated front seats are available with the Outback, whereas they are not available with Forester. Also, there's going to be more soft touch materials found in the Outback as well. So because of the tech, because of the seating, because of the soft touch materials and the higher end finish, once again, very easy pick here going with the Outback 7 to 1, totally blowing the Forester out of the water here in my comparison. The last comparison I wanted to do here because both of these cars are very off-road worthy. So I wanted to test their off-road worthiness in comparison here. And so you guys know Subaru does have the very best all-wheel drive system in existence right now that is backed up by plenty of different publications. Ground clearance comes in at 8.7 inches actually for both of them, which is a bit more than all the rest of the competition out there. And in addition to that, they both do offer X mode as well. It is available on the Forester premium trim level and up and all trim levels actually for the Outback. And so essentially what that does is it works with the VDC system to either reduce or increase wheel spin, providing optimum traction in really any kind of condition. So that's gonna help you out, especially when it snows here in Pennsylvania. But again, both of 
of them get that as well. So what I left it down to as far as who's going to win this competition is the approach and departure angles. So if you are truly going off-roading perhaps. So when it comes to the Forester, 18.7 degrees approach angle, Outback 18.6 degrees, pretty close there. Departure angle is where it really differs though. The Forester comes in at 24.6 degrees. Outback 21.7 degrees. So therefore, Forester is going to take the off-road win comparison here just because of the approach and departure angles. So 72, Outback is going to win my competition. Although I will say before you go, although the Outback won my particular comparison, many of the categories that I compared here in this video were very slight wins by the Outback. They are very, very similar similar vehicles and you really can't go wrong with either choice there quite honestly. If you wanted to save some money the Forester is definitely going to be the way to go. It is a little better off-road as well obviously with those departure angles but in the end in this particular comparison of course the Outback did win. Let me know what you guys would pick in the comments section below. Do appreciate you guys watching so much. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all and I do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold